Welcome to Guns and Chicken Strips. I'm your host, James. What's happening? We just finished a good old American breakfast at Waffle House. I've never really been a fan of Waffle House, but I ate a double cheeseburger for breakfast and it was awesome. We're gonna run up to Cabela's, check out some ammo prices. I'm here with my buddy, Mr. Clam, AKA Clambo. See you at Cabela's. elk and buffalo patties all in one sandwich that screams America well Cabela's was a bust every time I go in there I'm like you know what I'm gonna go check out and see if they got the ammo prices sure enough no good ammo prices in Cabela's I'll stick to my online bulk ammo pricing you know what I mean do you know what I mean he knows he knows what I mean. I'm over here at my buddy Martin's house, and I was thinking, I was like, I was just standing around thinking like, what if something went down over here, what would I do? But luckily, I carried my sidearm, but just in case stuff went down and I ran out of ammo with that, when I go to a friend's house, I always carry my backup. You walk in your buddy's house, you're standing around, all of a sudden, ninjas come through the back door. So you pull out your sidearm, you screw it up, and you left your ammo at home. So this is basically just a rock. So you throw it at him. You grab your backup, backup sidearm. And then you pull it out. Mm. Then you got your beast. See, you always carry your backup. It just, it slides perfectly in your front holster right there. Yeah. It's caught on something. It's not good. Boxers. Slides perfectly down there. No one can see your shirt over it. You got your back up right there. Main gun useless. Dead. Nobody be jacking around with you then. You take them down, walk away. This right here, my backup, I pretty much carry this around with me all day, every day, along with my Glock, my EDC. I just started today. So this is my secondary EDC, I guess you could say, my backup. It, I, I like to carry this, what is it, kidney? Is that your kidney? Appendix. This is my appendix carry right here. This is a Mossberg 500 Blackwater, I guess you could call it, because it says Blackwater right there. It, it has a breech barrel, breecher barrel, right there, beastly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to I like to appendix carry this whenever I can. It's it's pretty it's pretty nice. Perfect for home defense. Perfect for shooting uh, snakes, throwing at stuff. It's just perfect for a lot of different things, you know. Yeah, it's 12 gauge. I like it. Mossberg 500 Blackwater Edition. Hmm. He was thinking about putting flashlight on here. He wants me to help him out with that. And I was thinking a surefire setup, pressure switches and everything, but he doesn't like to go that hard in the paint like I do. Because I go hard in the paint when it comes to firearms. Go big or go home. Go expensive. No cheap. Let me know what you think. You got any suggestions for grip types, flashlights, anything on this little gun, let me know in the comments and I will forward that on to him. Some people ask, what kind, what kind of shotgun shells do you carry in your shotgun, you know? I carry all kinds of shotgun shells in my shotguns. He likes to carry a mixture of the of bird shot or the double lot buck shot. Buck, double lot buck shot, perfect for making somebody string cheese. Beanbag rounds for when you just want to make somebody feel stupid for not listening. But other than that, that's my appendix carry. Let's see if I can get a good picture with it. Now I've got one more gun I want to show you. This is that gun 
that you're sitting there when your daughter brings home old oh, Johnny tight pants. And you're sitting there on the couch just rubbing your gun. You say, what are your intentions with my daughter, boy? This is a Atlas Firearms 10 gauge break action. You see this beast right here. It's a 10 gauge, which it's not that much difference. The one on the left is a 12 gauge and the one on the right is a 10 gauge. So it's got a difference in size. This thing is a hoss. Like I consider myself to be a pretty, pretty hefty, pretty strong built guy. And I'm having trouble holding this thing up because it's just, it's just giant. It's massive, massive shotgun break action. This rifle, you can see like Doc Holliday was famous for carrying a 10 gauge shotgun. This thing is a beast, it's huge. You do not want to just go around shooting this thing for fun because it will jack your shoulder up. Kicking like a mule. And it actually came with inserts that you can insert into your barrels which they are hollow. And this one is a from 10 to 12 gauge insert. You put it in there like so, and then you can fit a 12 gauge round in there, right in the back of that. Instead of just having to use your everyday 10 gauge round and put it in there, you can also use your 10 to 20 gauges which are a little thicker on the outside. Put in there. Inserts, sleeves, grommets, if you will. Or your, yeah, it's the same thing. Another 10 to 20 gauge. And this shell right here is actually an old school cardboard 10 gauge round, which I'm not too, I don't really know very much about, but I'm told that they are kind of, they're not, real easy to find but it's pretty cool looking made a shotgun shell made out of cardboard son but yeah that's that's your this is your scare little Susie Q's dude thinking what he's gonna do when he gets home with her oh yeah I'm gonna get lucky tonight I don't think so senorita I don't think so So we're sitting around over here at my buddy's house, looking at guns, you know, man stuff. And I'm like, when did you get a cat? He got a cat. And then I re remembered he recently got married. So now he's got a cat. Cats have always kind of creeped me out. I love all animals. Love kitties. But look at him. He's just sitting over here on his tower, thinking he's above everybody else, judging, looking, chilling, not caring. Seriously? So look at him, he's judging me right now. We are back on the road, me and Mr. Clambo here. We have got to find some locks, like at a dollar store or something. I gotta mail a pelican case for Senor Lunkers. So while they are out hanging out, fishing, I gotta go mail something. Mail time. Pick those up. <laughs> Get one and two and three. Now we got the locks on there. Now we gotta find a FedEx store. Get this thing rolling. We are here at FedEx to get this beast mailed off. Let's we'll get in there and see how much it is. Need to mail this. Update on my current situation. I am stuck outside the Turkla household because the little one is sleeping. If you don't know who Turkla is, check out Lunkers TV, which I'm sure you do know who Lunkers TV is. 
I am stuck outside his place of residence. Young baby is sleeping. I don't want to wake her up. So, guess what we get to do? Solo CC's run. Yeah. I'm coming for ye. <laughs> Everyone that has eaten at a CC's pizza before knows that feeling you get whenever you leave CC's. This is that feeling. Back at the Turkle House, as always, you know? And we are going to install this curtain and these rods over this window to keep out creepers. Creepers be creeping, and I'm pretty sure this guy right here is a creeper. He is a creeper. I've seen him in that window a creeping right there. So we're gonna go ahead and put a stop to that. Got it locked up. Check it out. Privacy curtains. You can't see there. No light, son. No light, son. I know you're impressed with my skills, with my man skills. I'll show you why I do it. Creeper, right over there in that window, I saw him. He was in that window wearing nothing but a bathrobe. Very weird. The kitchen man duty of the day done. CC's action, a couple different guns. The whole Guggen squad should be back here in say 30 minutes or so. We're just gonna kick back, lay down, get some nap action in, wait on them. They're unanimous me for the 22 push-up challenge for the 22 veterans that commit suicide every day. So I have to do 22 push-ups now. I just hit a cookie with milk, so this is, I don't know how this is gonna go. I think you should have push-ups with me? You wanna do push-ups with me? John, now you can't do 22 push-ups. Watch me. Then I want you to do it. Let's see, where's a good spot for the camera? I'll just hold it. Hold it? Right. Is there gonna be good push-ups too? I'm sorry, you're not Nice. <laughs> Did it. Thanks, Jimmy. Yeah. So John B. held up to the end of the bargain. Now it's Peric's turn. I'd like to thank you for watching Guns and Chicken Strips. I hope you enjoyed that episode. We're just going to hang out here. Mike's going to eat his cookies. And we'll see you tomorrow. This is honey.